Supersonic flight is something that seems to have gone by the wayside in recent years. Back in the days of Concorde, breaking the speed of sound in a jet was something to aspire to. Now, the inefficient way that these planes move means that sonic boom breaking aircraft are few and far between in comparison to decades ago. But now, there's a new breed of supersonic aircraft, and the X-59 is one of the most exciting of these planes. Let's take a closer look at why. But before we get started, if you do enjoy this video and would like to see more just like it, remember to give us a like and subscribe to Military World to get more sent straight to your notifications. Supersonic flight is an amazing feat of engineering, but the main problem with it is the sound. When a plane breaks the sound barrier at 767 miles per hour, it causes a huge boom that can be heard on the ground. Oh, damn. At first, listening to this is spectacular, but heard frequently, it gets really annoying. This is what led NASA to start investigating ways to travel quickly, but also to reduce the noise. The overall goal of developing this plane is to fly it over the public and gather responses from people on the ground about the sounds generated during supersonic flight. Before this, there will be an acoustic testing phase where NASA will set up an array of microphones across a 30 mile long stretch of the Mojave Desert in California to measure the sonic thump and make sure it's as quiet as intended. If all phases of testing are successful, this could open the door to opening the way to commercial supersonic flight, which would be a massive landmark considering the US government banned supersonic flight for all civilian aircraft over land in 1973. In 2016, NASA asked Lockheed Martin and other engineering giants to submit proposals for a test airplane that could show supersonic flight over land was as safe and quiet as subsonic aircraft. The target was to make a plane with a boom of just 75 PLDB. This is measured in a volume unit that measures perceived sound, rather than actual decibels. 75 PLDB is around the same as hearing a dishwasher for less than a second. To give this context, Concorde's transatlantic PLDB was 105, which is the same as a chainsaw running at full speed. Clearly, the engineers had their work cut out but development had technically started way before 2016. Lockheed Martin's previous supersonic designs all contributed to the X-59. First, there was the C-100, which looked like a shorter version of the Concorde with the engine right on its back, splitting a V-shaped tail. Then there was the C-435 mode, which used the same V-tail design, but with a much longer body and smaller wings with a sharper pointy nose. The next iteration, the C-506, got rid of the V-tail by replacing it with the traditional airplane tail after they realized that, despite the fact it reduced noise, the V made it harder to move the plane. A year before NASA started on the X-59, the team started testing the C-603, which added a canard and two little winglets near the cockpit. It also pushed the engine farther back and set the wings at two different angles. The C-605 would then lay the framework for the X-59. Three years later, in 2018, NASA gave Lockheed Martin a $247.5 million contract to develop the Low Boom X-Plane. The US Air Force renamed it X-59 in June 2018. But there was plenty of work to be done before the world could see if the experiment was successful. By October 2018, NASA had finished testing on a model representing 8% of the finished product over three weeks. This testing was for static stability and control, dynamic forced oscillations, and laser flow visualization, which expanded on previous experimental and computational predictions. To optimize the design of the X-59, multiple teams at Lockheed Martin worked together over a period of seven months. These included aerodynamics, sonic boom specialists, loads, stress, and design teams. This became a balancing process that needed compromise and a lot of tweaking in the ply schedule and part geometry to achieve proper global stiffness and tailored flexibility where needed, aerodynamics, and strength. 
This was all to reach the main goal of producing the most efficient airplane with the lowest sonic boom possible. By November of 2018, Lockheed Martin had started building the first full-size parts of the plane in California. Major structural components were put together the next spring. In winter 2022, the engine was installed. This is the General Electric F414 GE100 engine, which is the power plant for the US Navy's F-18 Super Hornet. With Afterburner, this engine will provide 22,000 pound force or 98 kilonewtons of thrust. Since 2022, with its engine installed, the plane has undergone a huge amount of testing, from weight checks and fuel system evaluations to ground vibration assessments. The single-seat supersonic jet has a length of just under 100 feet, with a hard-swept wingspan of 29 and a half feet and a height of a very modest 14 feet. It will be able to cruise at 55,000 feet with a cruising speed of Mach 1.4. This is a very quick 925 miles per hour. The cockpit, ejection seat, and canopy all come from a Northrop T-38 with the landing gear from an F-16 jet. In comparison, Concorde was bigger and faster than the X-59. The 100-passenger craft used to cruise at 60,000 feet at around 1,350 miles per hour before its retirement in 2003 after a crash in France. But the X-59 isn't about being the fastest or the biggest. It's about providing safety and reducing noise. What has been produced is a jet that resembles a futuristic paper airplane. The plane's 99.7-foot-long airframe has a 34-foot-long cantilevered nose, a 29.6-foot single-piece delta wing, a cockpit with no forward-facing window, and engine and air duct placement above the wing to further muffle sound. The reasons behind all of these choices are to reshape or spread out the displaced air that happens during the flight of the aircraft, which means quieter sonic booms. Because the cockpit has no forward-facing window, it needs a modern way to fly the plane. Instead, the pilot uses what's known as an external vision system, or XVS, to fly the plane. This uses two cameras above and below the aircraft to show a real-time view of the front of the plane, shown on an HD screen. Not only this, but the XVS also acts as a heads-up display, which shows data such as altitude, airspeed, and flight path. There's a big advantage to this method of flying the plane. The XVS lets pilots see flashing warnings or colored text over the horizon, things they wouldn't usually see through a cockpit window. When the plane eventually hits the skies, it'll be monitored carefully to see if it's fulfilled the mission brief. When airborne, the plane will be subject to an acoustic validation phase. As part of this, NASA will fly the X-59 to ensure the sonic boom has been reined back in as planned. NASA will send the X-59 up with an F-15 fighter jet, which will act as a chase plane. This following jet will measure the shock waves being produced by the aircraft mid-flight. There will also be a process as part of this that's known as Schlieren photography, where NASA will capture an image of the plane breaking the sound barrier. It's not been an easy road to get to the point where the supersonic plane is almost ready to fly. The X-59 is in the system checkout phase, where all systems are checked to see if they can work together. A planned maintenance and modification stand-down was needed when some parts took five months to arrive. This caused a delay that pushed the aircraft's first flight, initially planned for December 2023, to early 2024. It's an exciting time as the X-59 is on the cusp of its first full test flight. If successful, this will pave the way for future phases of testing, including the all-important test on the public to see if the team at Lockheed Martin have managed to reduce the noise of supersonic flight. If this is achieved, then this will allow regulations to be overturned, and we can then expect to see commercial supersonic flights over our skies in the not-too-distant future. What are your thoughts on the X-59? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give us a like and subscribe to Military World to get our latest videos straight to your notifications.